Come on, T.O.P. See, I let's stand. Hallelujah. Let's just begin to thank the Lord on tonight. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Heavenly Father, we love you on tonight, God. Hallelujah. You're better and better to us than we've been to ourselves. We just want to thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for Jesus' bloodshed. Hallelujah. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for God's anointing. We just want to thank you tonight, God. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank him enough. You've been better than us than we've been to ourselves. Thank you while we slept and slumber. How you encamp your angels about us, oh God. We thank you for the love of God. We thank you for the mercies of God. We thank you for truth on tonight, God. We thank you for Apostle T.J. McBride. We thank you, Lord God, for the angel of this house. We thank you for prophetess and pastor Sharnay McBride. We thank you for anointing them afresh and anew. We thank you for new revelations. You and down there with power from on high, God. We thank you, oh God, that souls are being saved from the northwest, east, and south. We thank you for McDonough and Jonesboro and Griffin Church, God. We take the territory right now. We take this region, oh God. We take these small souls for God's kingdom because we are the ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We represent the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whether it's on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, God, save God in the name of Jesus. Touch those in the hospital room, touch them in the prison, touch those in the mental institution. Touch on tonight, God. Let the word download in our hearts, oh God. You say, He that hung and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. We decree the life. God, we're hungry for your word. We're hungry. Feed our hungry souls on tonight. God, on the speak of the hour, download a fresh word. Word. We're going to give you the praise. We're going to give you the glory. We're going to give you all the honor. God save his love and set free on tonight. God every auxiliary from A to Z. Deliver and set free God. In Jesus Christ's name. Come on let's give God a hand clap. Come on and open oh. your mouth and give his name glory in the room. Come on people that God open your mouth and give his name glory in the room. The Bible declares that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast unto the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. The next part of that says, oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So can we take about 30 seconds and raise your voice in the room? Come on, open your mouth and raise your voice. Revival is here. Whatever you need is in the room. Whatever you need is in the room. Come on and lift your voice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I can't stay there too long. I get excited when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me. Hallelujah. Can we just raise our voice just one last time and let's set an atmosphere. Come on, let's set the atmosphere for God to do what he's going to do tonight. Come on, Zion, let's set an atmosphere for God to do what he wants to do tonight. Heal how you want to heal. Deliver how you want to deliver. Come on, Zion, open your mouth. Give the name glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, have your way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and put your hands on it. Come on, you let's hear. Everybody clap your hands in the room. Open wide as the sky. We lift your hand. We lift your hand. Hands up. Hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. See, hands up. Hands up. The 
Everything that he 
if you believe it, you ought to lift up your hands. Hey, hey. Come on, raise your faith. Hallelujah. Come on, if you know that he's about to do it, you ought to shout hallelujah. Come on, if you're about to see the promises of the Lord, you ought to shout hallelujah. As we touch you with our faith, we receive manifestation. As we touch you with our faith, we receive manifestation. What was invisible shall be visible. And what was impossible shall be possible. As we touch you with our faith, you with we receive and what was invisible oh, oh, oh. shall be visible shall be visible as we touch you with the best.
issue of blood. You can do it again, God. 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 Come on, open up your mouth. Ain't this what I call a Why? Because it's holding the way. Why? Because the deliverance is holding the way. Why? Because new ideas are on the way. Why? Because new revelation. Because your dreams are about to come true. Why? Because it's worth it. We know it's coming. We know it's coming. Hey, but I know it's coming. But I know, but I know it's coming. But I know it's coming. Waiting on you to do it. Patiently waiting, God. I'm patiently waiting, God. And while I wait. Your glory, I'll turn over my place. Cause I know it's coming. Cause I know it's coming. It's coming, it's coming, 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 it's coming. Don't get weary. And well do it. For a new season. The season is here. The season is here. You can praise them now. The season is here. You can shout now. The season is here. You can praise them now. You can praise them now. You can praise them now. Open up your mouth and thank Him for it. You can praise them now. It's 
Bible, somebody lift up a praise. Tonight is your night. I said, tonight is your night. I said, angels are moving at the assignment of your word tonight. In the name of Jesus, I see healing angels all in this church. Come on, I see delivering angels all in this church. Come on, every stronghold, every addiction. Come on, every plan of the enemy canceled tonight. In the name of Jesus, I need you to lift up a praise that shifts every demon out of this place and releases every victory to you and your household. Open up your mouth and give them a shout of praise. Hey, hallelujah. So we give you praise. We give you praise. Every victory is in this house tonight in the name of Jesus and we thank you that it's already done we fasted we prayed we sought your face now we expect a harvest tonight now we expect a miracle tonight we expect you to move like never before tonight in the name of Jesus and we thank you that it's already done in Jesus name somebody shout amen now clap your hands and give God praise like you believe it's already done. Come on, give him praise like you believe it's already done. Hallelujah. I want you to go shake a few people's hands. Tell them it's already done. It's already done. Encourage your brother and sister tonight. Tell them it's already done. hearing the rain is coming I don't know who needs to hear that tonight but I hear the Lord saying I'm pouring out on your family I'm pouring out on your house I'm pouring out on your business and everything that you've been praying about getting ready to see your harvest I hear the Lord say the rain is shifting your whole entire family hallelujah and I hear the Lord said I'm sending the rain to wash away the shame I don't care what your past looked like God is washing away everything that held you bound in the name of Jesus, I want you to lift up a, a praise like you know the rain is coming. Hey! Oh! Yes! Yes! Hey! My feet feel a little light. Do I got anybody that want to praise them? Do I got anybody that says I need to put a praise on what God's about to do in my life? Hallelujah. I want you to grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, for the next few seconds, help me praise God for my miracle. If I'm talking to you, get on your feet and let's praise him. Let's praise him. Let's go. Let's go. Tell your neighbor, help me, help me, praise him, help me, help me. Everybody clap your hands. Yeah. 
Who in here believes tonight is your night? Who, who came in here straight from work was like, I got to get to the church tonight? In the name of Jesus, God has got a blessing for you because you pressed through to get here tonight. Hallelujah. And we have a woman of God tonight in the house tonight. Hallelujah. And my wife and I, we are so excited, amen to have her here with us. We've been praying, we've been listening, we've been saying, Lord, we give you praise for this awesome ministry that's gracing us tonight. Amen. And we are ready. We fired up. We ready to hear what God is saying to us tonight. Amen. So in the next few moments, I want them to go ahead. They have a video that we're going to play, uh, play to introduce our guest for tonight. And then after that, we're going to bring her up to bring the word of God for us tonight. How many y'all are ready? How many y'all are ready? Y'all don't sound like you're ready, though. Come on. Dr. Valerie Moore, prophesying since the tender age of two and preaching since the age of 19, Dr. Val is intentional about the mandate and calling upon her life. She shares her God-inspired wisdom with the world, compelling others to live in authenticity and abundance. Unlocking the prophetic mantle on her life by the age of 25, she walks in a level of boldness and spiritual authority that cannot be shaken. As a mentor and spiritual advisor to many, she travels across the country teaching, preaching, and prophesying to those who are receptive to what thus says the Lord. Breaking down barriers, denominational boundaries, she offers hope and healing to the despondent and broken. As the founder and CEO of Valerie Moore Enterprise, she is best known for provoking transformational change as she encourages others to commit to a life dedicated to the things of God. Currently pursuing a PhD in psychology and psychiatry, Dr. Val is a part of a national honor society and will graduate in the top three of her graduating class. A woman of great vision, style, and grace, she stands boldly in the belief that she does not have to confirm to the status quo, but only be all that God has called her to be. She encourages others to live their lives under the same mantra and mandate. Please receive the ministry gift of Dr. Valerie Moore. Come on, T.O.P., stand on your feet and let's let her know we appreciate her tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, can we give the Lord a shout tonight? Glory be unto the Savior. That would be good if it was for me, but can you give God some praise? They told me this was the tabernacle of praise, so I expect nothing less than a house filled with praise. Look at your neighbors, say neighbor. I beg of you, don't be tight tonight. T.O.P., can you do me a favor? Can you thank God for one of God's greatest, your pastor, Pastor Timothy McBride? Come on. I am a firm believer. I am a firm believer that what you do not honor will exit your life. One more time, shout for your leader. And can you shout even louder, go crazy for the jewel and the angel of this house, Lady McBride. Her feet are bloody, but we thank God for her tonight. I don't know why, but the devil hates her. But we, we thank God um, that he's going to do something absolutely miraculous is going to be birthed out of her in the next four months. Yeah. 
I'm not a lying prophet. I know what he said. And he, he told me on the way here, he said, I'm going to do exceeding abundance above all that there's a prophetic baby in her belly. And there's a national, international word that the enemy does not want the world to hear. But look at three people and tap them and say, it's coming out, it's coming out. When she releases this word, I hear the Lord. I hear the Lord say, uh, y'all not going to like me. I'm okay, though. Whenever she releases this word, the Lord says, I'm going to stretch this house. I don't know how y'all feel about this, but I just heard God say, when she releases, I'm expanding. Okay, you can do what you want to do. Can you do me a favor? Can you thank God for who I believe are the greatest pastors in the world? And that's my pastors, Pastor Shamar and co-pastor Jackie White of Have Life Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. And to my absolutely amazing mentor, we do have the same spiritual mother and father, but I thank God for her anyhow. I thank God for my mentor, Dr. Juanita Bynum. Can y'all shout? I have a word tonight. And this program may be interrupted. We're going to see what happens. I'm not a preacher that prophesies. I'm a prophet that preaches. So I'm not sure how this is going to work out. But we're going to do our best. But I have a word tonight. Can you go to 1 Samuel? Chapter number 10, 1 Samuel, chapter number 10, 1 Samuel, chapter number 10. Whew. Is something heavy in here? Glory be to God. 1 Samuel chapter 10. When you have it, scream at me and say, I'm there. If you don't have it, say, wait on me. Take your time and hurry up. I want all of you Android users to get delivered. We're apostolic. Apostolic. That's a spirit, and I pray it off of you. Only thing that's supposed to be green on my phone is cash app, not your text message. Praise our God. First Samuel chapter 10, verse number one, scream at the, your girl and say, I'm there. I'm in the KJV. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over over his inheritance. Go to verse number five. And thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabard and a pipe and a harp before them. And they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. I need you to look at somebody you're not afraid of. Look them in the face and say, neighbor, here's our subject. Don't be tricked by a kiss.
I don't like who you're talking to. Find somebody else and say, neighbor, neighbor. Don't, be tricked don't be tricked by a kiss. If I had to give a subtopic, it would be this for three praisers. It would be something is about to change. Father, we thank you. We bless you for tonight, God. We thank you. You're a better preacher than I am. So preach this. Father, I'm asking you that while I'm preaching, open up the ears of your people and let them hear what you have to say. Make me like the pen of a ready writer. God, give me clarity of thought and articulation of speech. Father, we ask you now, Father, to do something in this place that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Now, God, the next portion of my prayer is only for one group of individuals, and that is for the praiser. For every praiser in this house, while they're praising you here, you're working out a miracle at their address. While they're praising you here, you're canceling the assignment of every witch, every warlock, every Jezebel, every soothsayer, every python spirit, black magic, white magic, crystal of Mancy, spirit of Leviathan. You got to go tonight in the name of Jesus, because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, and God, we give you glory. Hey, 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 hey. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, three of y'all shout. You may be seated. Put your hand on yourself and say, I won't be tricked, I won't be tricked. by a kiss. There is a power shift that is happening in the body of Christ. But it's a shift of not just power, but it is a shift of power and authority. Even the devil himself can recognize and operate in power but he cannot operate in authority. However, he can recognize authority. I grew up in the country and in the city, y'all call it 18 wheelers, but in the country we call it coal trucks. And these coal trucks, we have mountains with no guardrails. They're quiet. We, 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 we have big mountains. I'm from the hills of West Virginia. I was born to be a coal miner's daughter. My mother is in the medical field. Everybody knows everybody's business. I had one of the largest graduating classes of about 54 students. Yeah, I grew up in a small, small town and we had coal trucks and, and we had very few police officers. So every now and then at the bottom of one of them mountains, you would see a police officer standing there in full uniform. I'm going somewhere. But at the top of the mountain coming down full speed, you would see a coal truck. Now, while the coal truck has the power, at the bottom of the hill would be a police officer and watch this, he wouldn't pull out no badge, he wouldn't pull out no taser, he wouldn't pull out no gun, he wouldn't pull out no light, but because of his uniform, ain't nobody saying nothing, and because of what he went to school for and training for, all he had to do was raise his hand and now while the coal truck has 
has the power now the police officer has the authority and because the police officer has the authority although the coal truck is bigger it has to come subject ain't nobody saying nothing to what and command and obey the rules of the police officer and I'm looking at a lot of people in our society today that have a lot of power but very few of them have authority glory hallelujah many of them can recognize a demon but they don't have the authority to cast one out I ain't got nobody saying nothing to me on that side so I'm gonna walk over here to this side I see a lot of people that are opening churches because they got popularity they got power but they don't have no authority so then we are left with full churches with empty people Mm-hmm. And, 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 and we are left with we are left with a situation where Facebook, social media, Instagram, TikTok is giving you popularity. Glory, hallelujah. And because it's giving you popularity, you don't think you need to have any kind of power or authority. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me in here. Because as long as enough people like it, I can continue to do it. And I can do it without God. I can do it because I'm gifted. I can do it because I'm talented. But because all of y'all, Lord have mercy, let me stay right here in the middle. Because all of y'all keep liking and sharing and condoning that foolishness then we don't need nobody to be saved we just need you to be gifted but tell three people on your role a power shift is coming Power shift is coming. I, I, I'm afraid of, of this generation of prophets, Pastor. And the reason I'm scared of this generation of prophets is, is because we have too much access to too much information. And because you all don't recognize the difference between hearing from God and investigating your information. Let me go over here. No, I grew up old school. I grew up where I got to lay on my face until I hear from God and now we got a generation of prophets, I'm sorry prophets that are looking up your information and you believe that word of knowledge is all there is to prophecy and word of knowledge does nothing for you spiritually word of knowledge is just an activation of your faith and because you are gullible because you haven't searched out your own soul salvation, who am I preaching to in here? Now you're chasing everything that can call your name like you don't know your name. Tell somebody on your road, she going somewhere. She, she going somewhere. Mm -hmm. You can call my name. You can call my address, but you can't tell me what God said. So we have people that y'all have given power that God has not ordained. Because we have replaced gullible with discernment. I'm gonna come back and just just a second and, and here's the problem uh, woman of God and man of God. We've got people getting promoted without progression. Uh, because we, when, when we have promotion without progression, it's dangerous because when we look at it through the spiritual eye and not allow ourselves to be blinded by emotionalism, who is God talking to? And it's dangerous now because we've got people walking around with a gift but no spirit. God help me. Glory, hallelujah. Lord, I thought that was my section over there. I done lost them. Let me preach right here. I said, we got people walking around with a gift and they got talent, but they ain't have no spirit attached to it. And there's dangers to a spiritless gift. Hmm. I need somebody ask me, what are the dangers, Dr. Fowler? What are the dangers? Danger number one is uh, the people have an expectation and you have an agenda. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The people have an expectation and you have an agenda. Uh, the, there's another danger of a spiritless gift. The, the, the second danger of a... Si Ooh, note takers are history makers. I love it. Yeah, the second danger of a spiritless gift is you don't know the difference between God using you and hell approving you. God help me. Are you anointed or available? Good God. Because let me bless your heart. Even God, when it's real, 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 real important and when it's an emergency, even God will use a jackass to get a word through if he has to. They ain't saying nothing over there. Let me come back over here. And just because you're being used does not mean you're approved. I ain't got nobody saying nothing to me right there. Look down your row and ask your neighbor who approved you. Hallelujah. The dangers of a spiritless gift is we call it a move of God when really it's emotional arousal. God, I'm going to preach to myself. Have mercy on this church, oh God. I said, we mistake a move of God with emotionalism. Just because you laid hands, glory, hallelujah, on somebody and they fell out does not mean you're anointed. I ain't got nobody saying nothing to me right there. You want me to prove it? I can prove it by my own testimony. Let me prove it to you because for years I've been prophesying since I was two years old. I am now 44. I'll be 45 this year. Been prophesying since I was two years old. Been preaching since I was 19 years old. I can see through muddy water. I can see in season and out of season. I can call your name, your address, and your VIN number. But here's the problem. The problem is, Pastor, I was able to do that and be an alcoholic. Let me come over here, because they just got real religious over there. Yeah, let me come on over here. The problem with that, sir, is I was able to do that and be addicted to prescription medication. Glory, hallelujah. I was able to sit on a B3 organ. I was able to send the church up in a praise. I was able to direct the choir. I was able to lead praise and worship. And everybody fell for it because everybody saw a gift, but nobody saw me dying. Because you will be amazed. Look down your road. Go ahead and speak to your neighbor for a moment and say, neighbor. Now you're going to lose your friend if you say this, but go ahead and say it anyway. Say, neighbor, you will be amazed at what the anointing can cover. God, they, they quiet. Look, look at somebody else and tell them you'll be amazed at what your gift can cover. You'll be amazed at what your talent can cover. Glory, hallelujah. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And I was able to travel around and prophesy because y'all ain't gonna like me. I don't need to feel him to use my anointing. What is anointing? We have to ask that question then. What is anointing? Anointing is something being set aside for a certain time for something that God needs. My sister's here, and she can recall this. We were in the DMV, and I went to this uh, restaurant. And if you know anything about drinking, you know you sit down, you don't really feel it. That's right. 
And I had drank and drank and drank and drank. And then I made the real mistake. Where the alcoholics at? Don't raise your hand. I made a big mistake and chased it down with some water. Well, you know I was in trouble. So when I stood up, I realized how drunk I was. Now, I was drunk to the point where I fell over in a ditch and almost hit my head on a rock. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. And so watch this. We get to the bottom of the hill. And at the bottom of the hill is a bunch of men that I've never seen a day in my life. And I start prophesying to one of them and asking them, when you gonna tell your mama that your girlfriend pregnant? Well, drunk. To the point they was like, yo, who is this woman? What, what, her, how she do? She know you? I don't know her. And they had to pull me to the car. My gift still operated and I was drunk. Hold on, wait a minute now. I had a gift that I was hiding behind. And I found out, Pastor, that there are people that want your gift but don't want you. I'm going to come back in a minute. They're quiet back there in that section. Let me talk over here. I said there are people that want your gift but they don't want you. Who is God preaching to in this room? No, in this season, I'm only running with people that will tell me you anointed but you're nasty. You anointed but you got to stop sleeping around. You anointed but you got to stop lying. You anointed but you can't. Oh, oh, y'all quiet in this room. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't benefit from my gift and let my soul go to hell. So one day I was, I was preaching, I was preaching in a church and, and out of nowhere, the word of knowledge fell on me and I called out these two twin girls, called them by their name, told them their birthday, gave them all of this information. The power of God ran through that church. People was falling all out in the floor. People was just passing out everywhere. The spirit of God was moving. I would go to another place and people blind eyes would be open. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Deaf ears would come open. And one day I went to the hotel, got in the shower, and while in the shower, after I had drank my many bottles of fireball after I preached. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me right there. I got in the shower and while in the shower tears began flowing down my face and I said to God, I said, God, how is it that you're using me like this? How is it that you're using me and working through me and folk are being delivered and people are getting set free and I'm coming back to the hotel room sneaking liquor. And he said something to me that changed my life. He said, Valerie, that's your problem. He said, your problem is you thought you brought me in the room. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. He said, you thought you brought me in the room. He said, but I inhabit the praises of my people he said it was their worship and it was their praise that brought me in the room but on the other hand their worship and their praise gave you grace who is God talking to he said it wasn't you he said I just covered you so the people wouldn't suffer I covered you so the people wouldn't die he said because there was somebody in that room that believed in your anointing and I was not going to expose you and lose a soul so 
a while in the shower tears rolling down my face I began saying the devil is a lie I began rebuking every spirit you can think of I began because I'm an expert in demonology so I began calling out all kind of demons and the Lord told me it's clear as my name is Valerie Moore he said stop I said what is it sir he said you are blaming the devil when it's not the devil it's a decision God help me in here they quiet in this room he said and every time you blame the devil for what a decision can change that's called stalking darkness who is God talking to y'all quiet in this room tell your neighbor stop stalking darkness it's not the devil if you've got the Holy Ghost it's your decision Deliverance is a decision. I don't care how many times you come to this altar. Glory. I don't care how much oil they pour on you. I don't care how many meetings you have with the pastor. Until you decide to change, you're going to keep shouting. You're going to keep dancing. And you're going to keep sleeping with him. I don't care how many days you come to church. You're going to keep shouting. You're going to keep dancing. And you're going to keep drinking. Look down your row. Prophesy to everybody on your row. And tell them, make a decision. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me here. I didn't. I got the Holy Ghost. I didn't have to go sit in a meeting. I didn't have to go to a detox center. I decided to say all of this has to go. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. That was 12 years ago, and I ain't picked up a bottle of liquor ever since then. Who is God talking to in this room? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Wrong neighbor, wrong section. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, today I'm deciding to get delivered from the me I made. Cause, 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 somebody lied. Somebody lie. Because watch this. I didn't just make a decision 12 years ago. I made a decision 12 months ago. And I made a decision 12 days ago. And I made a decision this morning. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me right there. Every day is a decision. Because just because I decided I'm not going to drink no more. Does not mean the desire in me has left. The desire ain't going nowhere. You've got to decide every day. We can't do Netflix and chill. Because I'm too weak to be in the dark with you. Who is God talking to in here? Look at your neighbor and say make a decision. No, I still like Hennessy. I still like Fireball. I still like Mad Dog 2020. I'm old school. <laughs> Brown liquor, white liquor, whatever liquor. I like it. And my flesh still wants it. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing, but I know. <laughs> I hope 12 people back there dance, three run and four shout. <laughs> I got a nation in me. <laughs> and because I got a nation in me, that 15 minute high is not worth a lifetime with God. Glory be unto the Savior. He ain't worth it. She ain't worth it. They ain't worth it. Don't fool yourself. The devil ain't did nothing. You decide. Because here's the problem. 
Some of y'all, I hear you in the spirit saying, Dr. Val, well, I got a soul tie. Your problem is you never thought your soul tie would get saved. Ain't nobody saying nothing back there in the back. Let me talk over here. What do you do when your soul tie decides to get saved? prophesy to everybody in here with a soul tie that in the next three days your soul tie going to get full of the Holy Ghost oh y'all mad at me <laughs> you going to go to sleep with him and see a demon <laughs> you going to go to sleep with her and see your mama, your auntie, your grandmama you going to get turned off ain't nobody say nothing to me you got to say God whatever you do glory hallelujah take this thing out of me Let me, let me bless you because cause I, I, I went through the track I, 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 I knew I was delivered you ready? how did you know you was delivered Dr. Val when people got mad at my deliverance watch this uh, be careful with people that will sin with you Because, uh, 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 ask me why. Because if they'll sin with you, they will sin against you. Do you not know that there are people, glory, hallelujah, that want you to stay lame? There are people that will sit you in front of a gate called beautiful and put change in your cup and never take you behind the gate. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. Why? Because there are people that want you to be stable in dysfunction. Why? Because there are people that benefit off of your dysfunction. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. I'm going to talk right here to that camera. Who is God speaking to in this room and watching us online? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm about glory, hallelujah, to be delivered from the me I made and the me they helped me become. Who is God talking to? Ain't nobody saying nothing. You can't get mad at the me you helped me be. Who is God? Sit down. We almost there, musician. So we move in emotional arousal. And, uh, you have no boundaries because you have no conviction. And, uh, when I tell you that uh, in this season, real prophets, I said real. I said real prophets are under arrest in this season. Because there is a difference between prophecy and being called to the office of the prophet. Let me help you prophets in this room. The lowest thing you do as a prophet is prophesy. Oh, they quiet. When you sit in the office of a prophet, there are meetings and there are gatherings and there are separations 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 and portals and realms that are not accessible to field agents. And the prophetic in the world's old, is the world's oldest ministry. As a matter of fact, prophets were in the Garden of Eden. Uh, because the Bible says that in Luke 11, 49 through 51, that the reason Abel was slain was not because of a better offering, but because he was the first of the earthly prophets. God, glory, hallelujah, is about to arrest prophets in a way that has never happened. And therefore, it's time for us to get ready in the kingdom of God because things are about to get very, very uncomfortable. We will not be held hostage by the edification and exhortation of man. That's for the gift. 
Well, we have a much broader, expansive mandate where the judgment of God, the logics of God, the mood of God, the doings and the actions of God are about to be pronounced through holy communications entities. And, and Saul, Saul, if I can get to my text for a few minutes, he needed the Holy Spirit. Saul needed the Holy Spirit to rule as Israel's king. And the reason many of us have not progressed and moved to another level is because you're getting by on skill and not anointed. But tell your neighbor in this season, you need the anointing. So how, Dr. Val, how does the anointing happen in this text? The Bible says that only Saul and Samuel are present. And the reason you can't get anointed is because you're not doing the right thing thing in your private time. Because the problem is, pastors, it's very hard to put something fresh on you when contamination is all around you. And the reason you're contaminated is not because of you, glory, hallelujah, but it's because who you let around you I knew that wouldn't go over too good. I, 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 I need you to be friendly to the people beside you and just ask them, what are the people around you carrying? I'm going to get kicked out of here. Even if they have your last name. Yep. Some of you need to get delivered from the ooh, from the leeches in your family. Some of you, glory, hallelujah. Because really, I don't blame your family. I blame you because you're addicted to being needed. Who is God talking to? Because your only glory, hallelujah, credibility is from validity, and you only feel valid when you feel like people are beneath you. doing the best I can. I've never seen a day where so many people have so many spiritual fathers and, and so many spiritual mothers. And the reason you have several spiritual mothers and several spiritual fathers is because when you don't like what the one said that you don't agree with, you go find you a witch. I ain't got nobody that's going to agree with your flesh. Who is God talking to in here? If I can't rebuke you, you can't be around me. Who is God talking to? If correction breaks the covenant, then one part of the covenant is a counterfeit. I refuse to cover what I can't correct. How you got so many spiritual moms? How do you have so many spiritual fathers? Because I am, I am pursuing my master's in psych, uh, for psychology and I'm pursuing a, a, a PhD in psychiatry all at the same time. Y'all pray for me. Glory, hallelujah. And one thing I learned is that too many voices is schizophrenia. Ain't nobody saying nothing. And you walking around here in spiritual schizophrenia because when you don't like what your pastor say, you go find a pastor that agrees with you and that pastor really don't agree with you with you but you're a bit tired there ain't nobody saying nothing they quiet over here but I'm gonna steal a quote from my mentor you won't bless me to blind me in this season ain't nobody saying nothing to me in here look at your neighbor and say I need somebody to correct me you notice ain't nobody really clapping on me No, because y'all's problem is you want your pastor to be your spiritual father and your friend. I ain't getting ready to be both. Uh-oh. No, no, you need somebody to tell you to sit down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. 
You, you need somebody to tell you just because you can run a revival don't mean you can run a church. Mm -hmm. you, you need somebody to tell you, you sing real good, but you're not a praise and worship leader. Uh -huh. You need somebody telling you you're a good musician, but you're not the minister of music. How you gonna minister to us in music and your wife don't like you? I ain't got nobody saying nothing to me in here. They quiet in this church. Lord, I'm tired of this church. Who is God helping? Your family don't like you. How you going to lead us and your own kids can't stand you? Run your house before you run me. Sit down. What, 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 what you see in this particular text that we are not seeing in the church, but watch this, watch this son, it's coming back. Glory, I said it's coming back. And what we're seeing, uh, that the real prophets of God are about to be, here it is, oil carriers. Okay, watch this. The reason that you should have shouted is because we've been blessed to drink from the ministry of reproducers. But hear me in the Holy Ghost, in case you have not noticed, uh, is that the prophets, the real prophets, are still the rare minority. I know that's crazy to hear me say, I can't imagine, glory, hallelujah, being in a house that believes in the majority of the responsibility belongs to the pulpit. I'm getting ready to get in trouble. And I know we've invested in deposits and raising up and multiplying from the pulpit and the raising of the saints. However, you will not believe how uncommon that is still in America, <clears throat> that there are leaders who refuse to release what's active in their lives. And for this reason, there are many churches that are being held captive by the limitations of their leader because their leader's primary responsibility is not preaching. I'm going to get in trouble. But the primary responsibility of the leader is impartation. Mm -hmm. oh, God. Because before Jesus taught the 12 how to preach, he made them recipients of impartation. And unfortunately, one of the crises in the church is that there are people that are having to snatch batons that should be freely given. And there are people that are dying in highly decorated facilities, beautiful extremities, all the lights, all the glitz, all the glamour, but there is no reach into the members present to stir the abilities of God in them. And we have not fallen, and we have rather, fallen into pulpit idolatry. And Jeremiah said, my people love it this way. We want the pastor to be it all. We want the pastor to do it all. And, 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 and you want the pastor to be, watch this. And let me help y'all. Let me bring a balance here uh, because I'm a pastor's daughter. Been a pastor's daughter for 44 years. And one of y'all's problems is <clears throat> y'all want the pastor to impart but they can't impart. Y'all gonna get mad at me. They can't impart into you because in order for them to be impart, impart into you, they have to spend time with God. 
but they can't spend time with God worrying about if the light's going to be on. I'm getting ready to get, oh boy. Uh-oh, see how quiet it got in here. Because you cannot be somebody that constantly withdraws and make no deposits. I ain't got nobody saying nothing. Isn't it amazing that the biggest beggars are the least givers? Who is God talking to? The most demanding people in the church are the people that don't want to give nothing. And you got the audacity when the pastor can't be there for you, but it's your fault. Because last I checked, we all servants. I don't believe, y'all not going to like me tonight. I don't believe in a bivocational pastor. Because you want him to do all your weddings. All of them. You want the church to sponsor all the funerals of people in your family that have never attended this church. You want them to come to all your kids' games and your kids don't show up to none of the services. I ain't got nobody saying nothing to me right there. And you want them to do all of that while working a nine to five with a wife and children or with a husband and children. And you don't expect them to ever get rest. But you want them to do, you make demands. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. They quiet in the back. It's all right. I brought myself here. I get myself home. You want to make demands of a place you're not depositing into. told him I have a son and said, mama, mama, why you, why you don't answer the phone when I call? I'm working. <laughs> and if you want me to stop working, send me a check. <laughs> they quiet over there. If you want to make me more available, make my account bigger. Who is God talking to? Because after I'm done counseling you, I can't go to the light company and tell them I was counseling my son. They're going to counsel my lights. Who is God talking to in here? Look down your row. Minister to everybody on your row and say, help the church. Help the church. Oh, shit. So I have to bring back lunch. But there are some leaders that are lacking the ability to provide impartation. And woe to you, oh my God, that acts to be trained. Woe to you that acts to be taught. Woe to you that acts to be equipped. Because now they will say that you're rebellious. Glory, hallelujah. Now they will say you're a Jezebel. Now they'll call you Absalom. Now they'll call you divisive. Because let me help you. There are some leaders that are pastors of churches that watch this never want you to grow. Because they would rather have their few pews filled than your soul. Who is God helping in here? But T.O.P., you better take a praise break and give God glory. That ain't your story. You got a man full of oil. You got a woman full of oil. And I prophesy a divine impartation that's about to hit this ministry. I'm almost there. 11 minutes, I'm coming. Sadabandataya. Ooh, Samuel had an anointing that many preachers, prophets, apostles, bishops, elders, evangelists don't have today. And that is, sorry, hallelujah, the ability to pour oil. Watch this. He didn't keep it on reserve. It was a part of his prophecy mantleship was to carry the oil and this is important because when you see a prophet with oil I'm getting ready to get in trouble a king never carried it stay quiet in here Arvetta number one 
Write this down, note takers. Kings did not have the responsibility of carrying oil. Number two, the priests didn't carry it. They go, oh Lord. They used it. Glory, hallelujah. And they gave it in an offering. But it was part of the travel bag of a prophet. Just in case there's somebody that needs placement. Glory, hallelujah. I'm trying to figure out how people are getting ordained and people are getting affirmed without any impartation. I know this ain't popular, but... Uh, Mm, watch this, watch this, watch this. Therefore, because the prophet carried the oil, it made him more superior than the king because a king could not install another king. The prophet had the responsibility and the obligation to anoint only prophet, only person that did that was David. And you will never see it because it was not their responsibilities because the prophets, watch this, were the ones verified. I'm coming. Because the oil is verification. They quiet. And there is an authentication that happens when the oil is poured. So prophets have the anointing to verify, to authorize, to legalize, to give the right to be. That was not the function of the king. It was the function of the prophet. You cannot be under leadership that refuses to pour oil. And you cannot be manipulated into staying into oilless places. Because pastor, here's the problem, woman of God. We're filling our church with great singers, great musicians. The edifices are beautiful, but I don't see no oil dripping. Ah! Glory, hallelujah. And when I walked in this room, I could feel the oil coming off of you. God help me in here. Because watch this. The oil, when you have it, you don't need antics. They quiet back there, I'm going to come over here. Lord have mercy. When you got the real oil, you don't have to coach me into the most holy place. I live in the most holy God help me in here. The oil will draw you. Who is God talking to in this room? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, not only do I need my leader to carry the oil, but in this season of my life, everything around me got to have the oil. Who is God talking to in this place? No, I need you to come out of your seat and run to three people and say, neighbor, somebody got to carry the oil. You ain't doing nothing what I told you. I said, come out of your seat. Run to three people and say, neighbor, somebody has got to carry the oil. Hey, 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 hey. No, I need one of my friends to look at who I'm dating and say, don't marry him, girl. I need somebody in my circle that's going to have discernment. Somebody in my circle got to protect me from me. Somebody. Come, God, God, God. Look down your row and say, one of y'all got to have the oil on you. Somebody got to protect me. Somebody got to cover me. Somebody got to watch over me. Somebody. <laughs> God Almighty. Because in this season, man of God, if everybody in your circle all got the same issue, no, we ain't in this together. I don't need us to be in this together. One of us got to be out of this. Who is God talking to? All of us can't be bitter. All of us can't be an angry black woman. All of us can't be broke. All of us.
Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right there. Look at your neighbor say, in this season, I'm not going to be the richest one in my circle. I'm not, that ain't a testimony. If every, glory, hallelujah. If you're the smartest one in your circle and you're the wealthiest one in your circle, that is not a circle, that's a cage. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. And tonight, I deliver you from the spirit of the cage. Tonight, I came with keys to break open every lock, to break open everything that's trying to keep you bound, that's trying to hold you hostage. I need 25 people in this room. Open up your mouth and scream, I'm coming out. You ain't saying nothing. I said scream and say I'm coming out. Uh, glory, we almost there, seven minutes. <laughs> Watch this now. So the oil, glory, hallelujah, is verification. So Dr. Val, if the oil is verification, then why did Samuel kiss him? My God. If the oil is verification, oh, somebody get ready to lose it back there. Then the, oh my God, then the kiss, watch this, is validation. Oh God, Anamashiataya, let me help you before you affirm yourself who validated you. Hey, they quiet in here. Y'all was just screaming. What happened? Because woman of God, I refuse to let anybody speak over me that has not been both verified and validated. I refuse to let anybody lay hands on me that has not been verified or validated. I refuse to let people speak over my life that has not been verified or validated. I'm so sick of parking lot prophets who is God talking to no you ain't gonna heal me up in no corner who anointed you who affirmed you who gave you a license does your daddy have a daddy I'm so I refuse to call a man father that doesn't have one oh my shit they quiet in here. Watch this. Watch this. He, he, he had to validate. Why did he have to give Saul validity? Watch this. Can I help you? Uh, teach this, Pastor. I don't have time. The reason he had to give Saul validity is because he did not want Saul moving in performance anxiety. God have mercy. This is why Jesus himself got approval from the Father. Ain't nobody saying nothing. <laughs> because before he ever performed a miracle, ain't nobody saying nothing. And before he ever preached, he did not want him preaching unto approval. This is where a lot of this generation is going wrong. Because they preach and they teach unto the applause of men. And their entire ministry is motivated by cheers and applauses but I came as a prophet of the Lord's church to declare a decree that in this season I'm a preacher until the lame walk I'm a preacher until the dumb talk and if you never clap and if you never say hallelujah I'm a preacher until blinded eyes are open I'm going to preach until heaven approves me We almost there. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. He, he, he doesn't prophesy about the war is coming. He, he speaks over Paul because, because he didn't want Paul or Saul rather to be locked and chained and bound by a demon called persuasion. God Almighty. Oh. Pay attention to the prophetic acuity of Samuel. He has yet to prophesy to Saul 
about what's coming or what's about to happen. He doesn't prophesy about the wars coming or the coming of the wealth. He prophesies, y'all ready for this, about Saul's past. Oh God, why? Because nothing has the ability to interfere with your potential like your history. We almost there. There are leaders and preachers enamored with and immersed in the future of a thing but have not confronted the hindrances of the history of a thing. And Samuel understood and Samuel recognized that the past has power. Preach God. Because the devil would like nothing better than to keep you debating with your history while your destiny is lingering in limbo. God help me. So Samuel shows up to close the door to Saul's past. This is why many leaders don't like the prophetic because it forces you to deal with what you're hiding. Watch this, watch this. So watch what he says then. In verse number three, after he prophesies to the future, to the past of Saul, watch the next words. I'm going to look at you because they're about to lose it. Watch this. He prophesies to Saul's past. And do you know, son, the next thing he says? The next thing he says is, go forward from here. over 25 people in this room and a hundred watching me online that God is breaking the chains off of you right now and every every spirit that has held you bound by your past is broken tonight I kill every ancestral demon I come against every historical pain I come against the abandonment I the rape, the molestation I come against your daddy issues your mama issues the abuse and tonight whom the sun sets free watch this watch this he says uh no, 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 no. Slap your neighbor a half eye and say, neighbor, go forward from here. No, your neighbor ain't happy about being free. But I need about 300 of y'all in this room. Put your hand on your own self and say, self, you have permission to go forward from here. You ain't gonna wait till tomorrow. You're not gonna wait till next week. You're not gonna wait to next month but I prophesy you're moving forward Lord of Akania Shire watch this how do I move forward forgive forgive what you didn't cause uh uh y'all don't like me tonight Hey, glory, hallelujah. Because watch this. Some of you are not even fighting your own demons. You're fighting the demons that your mom and daddy refused to deal with. I'm coming to get you in just a moment. You want Bible for it? I got Bible. Because I'm so sick of preachers uh, preaching about Jacob. Y'all don't call Jacob a liar. Y'all don't call Jacob a deceiver. Y'all don't call Jacob a manipulator. And he was all of that. But I'm waiting on one of y'all to talk about his lying mama, Rebecca. Jacob was a liar because his mama told him to lie and love a shy out of the car. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, tonight you are free from what your daddy did. Tonight you're free from what your mama did. Who oh, you're free? Point 
to the person beside you. Sound man, give me a little more. I feel my preach coming. Point to the person beside you and say, neighbor, it wasn't your fault. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't your fault. It's in your DNA. But tonight I break every generational curse off of your life. And here it is for a parent. Your children will not suffer with what you suffered with. Tonight. Hey, 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 hey. Why am I speaking in tongues? Because there's a mom in here that need to run. Because God just delivered your son from alcohol. Who is God talking to in here? I said somebody's son just got free. Yes. Uh huh. I don't know who this is for, but there's a daddy in this room that needs to forgive yourself for what you wasn't to your son because God said you are a product of your own father and you need to forgive your father because he can only be the father that was to him. Who was God talking to? And tonight I broke, I break the curse of unforgiveness. I break it up off of your back. I break it up off of your shoulder. I don't know who that mama was, but the Lord said, had you ran, God said the judge would have switched the verdict in the favor, uh-huh. Yeah. No, this is the part you dance on, and he's guilty, but God said, I'm about to save him. Hey, 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 I'm about to, run. Oh! to confront some things in my history before I move forward in my destiny for a minute. So the Bible says, he says, uh, you're going to leave from here. Watch. We almost there. We're going to leave from here. Uh -huh, I love it. I love it. You're going to leave from here and you're going to go to the hill of God. And when you get to the hill of God, you're going to meet three men. Somebody say three men. Going up to God to Bethel. <laughs> They're going to be carrying something, Pastor. One's going to be carrying three goats. Now, I said, I, said, uh, I said, why three goats, Jamie? I said, why three goats? Because he wanted Saul to know that when you get to the place where you will reign, that you will not be among sheep. Be quiet. He said, I want you to encounter what you're going to deal with on your way to the top. God help me. He said, you're going to have to deal with rebellion. Uh, you're going to have to deal with folk that don't listen. You will deal with people that can't follow instructions. Uh, you will deal with people that will turn on you at the drop of the die. And anybody in this room that's been going through any of that in this season, newsflash, uh, you on your way to the top. I ain't got nobody. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 that was a good place to shout right there, Temple of Tabernacle of Praise. That was a good place to run, Tabernacle of Praise. Tell three people on your road, I'm on my way to the top. I'm on my way to the top. No, you need to scream down your row and tell somebody on your row, it's only up from here. It's only up from here. Uh, oh God, oh God. He said, you gonna, next you're going to see a man. 
And he's going to be carrying three loaves of bread, which prophetically is a sign of deliverance. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. In other words, <laughs> he said, uh, on your way to the top, <laughs> you might get offended. He said, I got to test your appetite. Glory, hallelujah. On your way to the top. I got to see what your triggers are. On your way to the top. I got to see what stirs you on your way to the top. I got to see what lures you on your way to the top. I got to see if you're swaying to and fro. I got to see what your sustaining power is. Okay, can I go ahead and say it like I want to say it? Do I have? The reason he had to do that and test his appetite is, is that the camera? The, okay, uh, because uh, watch this for 300 people in this room and 200 online because you know your future is close when your past show up. They quiet over there, but let me talk to somebody over here that says, I ain't talked to you in three years. Where did you come from? Your future is right around the corner. Watch this. Uh, so then, one, 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 this is the last one. On your way to the top, look at somebody say, on your way to the top. You're going to see another one, and he's going to be carrying a bottle of wine. And what is the bottle of wine? The bottle of wine is a representation prophetically. It means to be baptized. Good Lord Almighty. And another representation means glory, hallelujah, to be crushed. Y'all don't like the crushing. He said, on your way to the top, you're going to go through a crushing. On your way to a top, you're going to feel like you're having a nervous breakdown. On your way to the top, you're going to feel like you're losing your mind. He said, but don't worry. Be happy. Why? Because you've been covered by the blood of the Lamb. Y'all ain't saying nothing in this good church. I said, look down your row and say, hey, neighbor. I don't like your neighbor. They got an attitude. Find another one. I said, look down your row and say, oh, neighbor. Shh. I said, find somebody and say, neighbor, on your way to the top, don't worry about who hurts your feelings. Don't worry about who offends you. Don't worry about who talks about you. Oh, my God, because last I checked, thieves don't break into empty houses. And if folk is messing with you, then it evidently is something in your vote that they want who is God preaching to in this place but I need you to lean 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 on your neighbor and grab your neighbor by the hand shake your neighbor shake them real real good and say oh neighbor say oh neighbor Hey, glory, I feel my help coming out. Say, neighbor, on your way to the top, I want you to know that the last time I read my Bible, Exodus said, the more they were afflicted, the more they multiplied. And God's kids are like baby's kids. We don't die. Preach in this place. Grab so I'm ready grab somebody and pull on them real good and say neighbor my mind is made up and I'm on my way and I refuse to let anybody stop me on my way to the top I refuse to let anybody hold me back on my way to another level and I 
refuse to be tricked by a kiss. The Bible says that the way you're going to know that you came to the hill of God is because you're going to hear, not see. You're going to hear a company of prophets coming down from the high place when you're on your way to another level I ought to hear you more than I see you but he said how they gonna hear you the way you're gonna know is because you're gonna hear a tabret you're gonna hear a sultry you're gonna hear a harp and all of those instruments are a representation of praise how they gonna know that T.O.P. Is on his way to the top because before they can get in the parking lot, they're gonna hear your praise ringing up out of your belly. Look down your roll and say, Neighbor, if you didn't like me last season, just wait till you meet the me that's about to come out and go into my next season. songwriter say that when the praises go up blessings come down but that ain't what I got when the praises go up look down your road and say the blesser the blesser comes down I don't like who you're talking to could you grab somebody shake up real good shake them and rock them rock them and shake them and say neighbor don't be tricked by a kiss how do you know that we on our way to the top because I read in my Bible that after you have suffered for a while that shall be seen time and a harvest how do you know that you on your way to the top cause I read in my Bible for I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in me how do you know that you on your way to the top look down your road and say neighbor the reason I know cause many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord he shall deliver you out of them all is there anybody in this church that says tonight is the night that I made up in my mind that I'm going to the place where God has called me to come out of your seat run to three people and say neighbor silly rabbit tricks up a kid and this is the last day that I'm gonna let anybody manipulate me this is the last day I'm gonna let anybody use me this is the last day I'm gonna let anybody play games with my life this is the last day who am I preaching to is there anybody in this church that can open your mouth shout unto God I got enough people around me shout unto God and say oh 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 name say neighbor if you're lacking strength I got enough strength in me to pull you out grab your neighbor's hand I said grab your neighbor's hand I said grab your neighbor's hand and say neighbor when I come out you're coming out when I get delivered you're getting delivered pull your neighbor and say neighbor when I get free you're gonna be free when your son get healed your son gonna get healed when my daughter get free your daughter go back I 
said, look at somebody and say, neighbor, tonight we all coming out. Pull your neighbors, pull them out, pull them out, pull them out, pull them out. Musicians, you ain't helping nobody. You ain't helping nobody. I said, pull your name, pull them out tonight, and say, tonight, this is a freedom party. Tell your neighbor, tonight, we all gonna be free. We all gonna be healed. We all gonna be delivered. Come on, somebody, help your neighbor. You won't be deceived. You won't be. You won't be swayed. Tell them help is on the way. And I wish somebody would open your mouth and give God glory. Because you know greater, 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 greater is he that is within me. To give God glory, I got a reason to give God praise. I should have went crazy. I should have lost my mind. I should have died. I should have quit. But there was something in my belly. There was something in my spirit. There was something in my season. I got too much on the line. I sacrificed too much. I've been through too much. I almost lost it all. And I refuse to get this close to my breakthrough. I refuse to get this close to my way out and throw in the towel. I will not throw in the towel. How do you know he's going the reason I know that is going to come through because Jeremiah 29 and 11 tells me that the devil meant it for evil, but God knows the outcome. God knows how it's going to end. God knows how it's going to finish. This is a fixed fight. This is a fixed fight. It's a big fight. And Jeremiah is saying, I can't give up. I can't quit. Cause it's just like fire. Just like fire. Just like fire. Shut up. says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. Tell your neighbor, say, he knew about you before there was a you.
I, I learned something. Jamie, I, I learned something. Those of you watching us online, I learned something. Musicians, okay. They, I think we're about to lose the home church, okay? I'm gonna come over here with y'all. You know what I learned, sir? I learned to stop quiet crying over midnight season. First lady, ask me why. Because uh, whether y'all believe it or not, it's, uh, it's the shortest season of your life. Uh-uh, that, that ain't where you shout. Watch this. Those of you in the midnight season, the Lord told me to tell you it only lasts 60 seconds. Somebody need to make an announcement to hell. The worst thing you can do is let me see 1201. Because if I see 1201, tell somebody you are 60 seconds away from the biggest breakthrough of your life. You are sick. You are 60 seconds. Don't you stand by nobody that's not shouting, that's not giving God glory. Move. If you gotta come out your seat, get out your seat and shout. Shout. Cause it's almost over. I said it's almost over. away 30 seconds away 30 seconds 30 seconds if you can praise it for 30 more seconds the Lord told me to tell you it shall spring forth it shall spring forth it shall spring forth it shall spring forth 15 seconds 15 seconds you're almost there you're almost there come on tabernacle come on those of you online don't you quit don't get tired be not weary in well-doing for in due season you're gonna reap this is your due season this is your due season this is your due season. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, But the Lord told me to tell every parent in here, this next shout is going to deliver your children. This next shout is going to deliver your son. This next shout is going to deliver your daughter. Shout for your baby. Shout for your baby. Shout, shout, shout. Shout, shout, shout. Shout, shout. Shout, 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 hey. shout, shout, shout it out, shout your son home, shout your daughter home, shout until they run to the altar and say, what must I do to be saved? Shout until they 
they start speaking in tongues. Shout until the liquor make him sick. Shout until she lay down with him and see a demon. Shout until every spirit that has them bound breaks up of their life. Shout until the prison doors open. Shout until God cleaned their record. Shout, shout, mama. Shout, daddy. Shout. I said, shout. I said, shout. Shout is going to break every addiction in this room. I said this next shout is going to break every addiction in this room. Open your mouth and shout that it's broken. I said it's broken. I said it's broken. Hey, hey, hey. I said it's broken. I said it's broken. I said it's broken. I said it all shiny of all sea. I said it's broken. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. I said, come on, Zion. I said, come on, Zion. And give him glory, give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. You wore the right shirt tonight because God said your past is about to watch you win. Your past is about to watch you win. If I see our time. saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on church. Come on church. Come on church. Come on church. He didn't forget about you. He didn't hope. Yes sir. Yes sir. He's going back 10 years and he's cleaning it up. Cleaning it up. Hope. 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 Y'all getting quiet in here. I said, open. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Come on, Zion. 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 Is there a Brittany in here? Brittany. You're Brittany? Makaya. Don't get quiet, church.
Okay, because I heard James. His middle name is James. Okay. Brittany Atai. If at least 40 people in this room will shout, the Lord said, wait a minute. The Lord said, by May, the second job you applied for that you really wanted, they're going to call you. Wait, 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 pick her up. And if they really shout, the Lord said, I'm going to give you a resting place. I'm going to do it in my name, but I'm going to put it in yours. Y'all quiet. You're quiet. You're quiet. Brittany, he said, your suffering season is over. The Lord said, I did not forget about you. And the Lord said, The Lord said, I'm going to bless you because you didn't get revenge. Yep, I need somebody in here to scream like you. I need a single mother in here to go crazy for Brittany. I gotta go. Lift your hands. Christopher is there a Chris Christopher Chris you're Chris do they call you Chris okay I didn't think so what do they call you Brandon that makes sense so is it Christopher Brandon okay Just sit it on the floor for a second. Let the floor sustain. Lift your hands. Otaya uh, Takashi. First part is none of y'all business. Worship. Now, they're always playing for you when you need a breakthrough. I need you to worship for him.
Your son won't suffer like you suffered. I need somebody to shout in here. I'm, 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 I gotta go. your daughter your baby girl what's on my life she carries y'all don't I'm not talking about the preaching I'm talking about this anointing this this prophetic and her her strongest gift is discernment It's why she don't really do a lot of people. She she very uh, she could sing very cutthroat. I guess I don't know what the word is. Like uh, I'm gonna tell you what I think. You know, tell you the truth. It, it's not mean. It's her anointing. <laughs> Listen to me, sweetie. I want you to start sharing your dreams. Because your dreams are very prophetic. Very, very prophetic. And uh, I don't know what this means. Uh, but the Lord wants me, Korish, Yataya, to assure your children that they're not going to bury their mother early. Whatever the enemy would try to do, it's a scare tactic. It's a fight of your faith. And the Lord says you, he won't win. I can't let it go. I keep hearing expansion, Pastor. Growth. You're in, in, in the next month, if I be a prophet of God, there's going to be an influx of people in this room right now committed to this ministry that they're getting ready to see. I'm not a lying prophet, sir, and I don't like carnal prophets. I can't stand it. If you ever follow me, I'm what they call the gloom and doom prophet. I see the blood in the streets. I see all of that. But tonight... What I'm hearing the Lord say is tell him that I'm raising up wealth in this house. Wait. You're going to know it because over the next 30 days, people are going to come and tell you how their credit score was supernaturally increased. And the Lord said, by July, at least 25 people in this room will be homeowners. That is the weakest praise. Come here, sir, you. Come here, Pastor, please. Lay your hand on his chest. Towards his heart. I need a hundred people in this room as loud as you can. Say, live! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Something just broke. Something just broke. Hey, hey, hey! 
Hey! One, two, three, four, five, six roll, white t-shirt, swaying side to side. Ball head gentlemen, lift your hands. Uh, you were swaying and I saw a house flip. The Lord said if your whole row of praise God, you will own three homes by the end of the year. go glory to God there's a heavy spirit of the entrepreneur in this room watch this Prophetically, I want you to find a hand to grab. That means be led by the Spirit. Ask the hand that you're holding. Ask them, say, are you a giver? Wait for the answer. Ask that same hand. Say, are you a praiser? Wait for the answer. Musicians, get ready. Say, well, since you give and since you praise, I just wanted to see what it felt like to stand this close to the wealthiest person in the room. Agreement that your status 
just changed. Your status just changed. Your status just changed. Your whole life just shifted. Your whole life just shifted. Your whole life. Somebody shout. Somebody holler. Somebody dance. Somebody run. Give him glory. Because your life just went to another level. Your life just turned around. I need everybody under the sound of my voice. Turn around one time. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you turned around, it turned around. Give God glory. I said, give God glory. Hey. Praise Him upon the loud instruments. Praise Him. Upon the string instruments and organs, praise him on this temple and dance. Let everything, let everything that have breath open your mouth and shout. Another level, another level, another level. Another level, another level, this church just went to another level, this ministry just went to another level, and sis, you don't have to cry about it no more, because everything you've been praying for just broke loose in this room. I'm giving you five more seconds. Give God the biggest praise you done gave him all year. Give him glory. 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 I gotta go for real this time. This is my last one. This is the last time, and I'm done. Grab the hand beside you. Watch this. I'm leaving. Pastor, you can make your way up here. Say, neighbor, neighbor. you're holding the hand, holding the hand of, a of a solution. No, they, they didn't shout right. Tell them in this season, I'm the answer. God is about to download into me everything you need. Don't you mishandle me because I might be the person to write the check. Don't you treat me crazy because I am the solution. God has anointed me. Everybody in this room shout.
It's revival. It's revival. hands to the Lord. Father, we receive everything that was deposited in us tonight. We will never be the same again. We will never be the same again. The oil is here. And we receive it in Jesus' name. In your own way, lift up your hands and begin to worship the Lord. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, come on, come on, come on, T.O.P., come on. Come on, lift up your voice, pray in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yes, Lord. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Oh, yeah. Come on, lift your hands and lift your voice. Come on. He's renewing you. He's restoring you. He's refilling you. Oh, come on, a new level of his glory, a new level of his power, a new level of his spirit. Hey, hey,
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We receive tonight. We receive tonight. We receive tonight. We receive tonight. It's a new season for you. I said it's a new season for you. We receive it tonight in Jesus' name. Lift your hands high up. God, everything that you have for us, we receive it tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. More power is being released tonight. More glory is being released tonight. More anointing is being released tonight. Hey, more fire is being released tonight. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. You lift it up, church. Come on, let's lift our hands and worship him. y'all thank God for the Holy Spirit that's in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, never appear before his presence empty-handed. And under this anointing, she said two things. She said, are you a giver and are you a praiser? How many of those go, those go hand in hand? I want to give you an opportunity to sow into what God has done for us tonight. This is a wealth transfer. I heard the Lord. How many of you know she confirmed so many things that have been said in this house? Praise God. I want to, I'm going to sow $100 for what God did for me tonight. And I want to see as many people that can match me tonight. If you can't do 100 get as close as you can to it. And in the name of Jesus, your finances are already blessed and already anointed in Jesus' name. What I want you to do, those of y'all that are giving by check or cash, just come lay it on the altar. Those of y'all that are giving electronically in Jesus' name, lift your phone up right now. Father, we anoint our giving tonight and we thank you that it's already done in Jesus' name. Amen. Those of y'all that are watching online, you need to sow into this anointing. Amen. You may be in another place, but there is no distance in the spirit. Amen. The same God that's with us here is the same God that's with you where you're at. There are prompts at the bottom of your screen. I want you all to sow tonight. I want you all to match me at $100. If you can't match me, get as close as you can because something supernatural is breaking off of you in Jesus' name. Something is breaking off of your finances tonight. How many of y'all received that tonight? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 
I got a praise report. Someone else came to me and said they're a veteran and they just got their 100% last week. Come on. All the veterans give God praise that your brothers and sisters are getting their 100%. Who's still waiting on your 100%? Stand on your feet. We got to pray for you right now because you're supposed to get it. That's, what, that's the word of the house. You're not going to serve this country and not get what's due to you. So in the, if you see somebody standing, point your hands to them and declare a decree in the name of Jesus. Before, in the next 90 days, thank you, Lord. In the next 90 days, they will get word, hallelujah, that their 100% has been approved in Jesus' name. Now, veterans, give God praise like you know it's already done. Amen. Who's believing God for student loan forgiveness? Come on. Who's in? Stand on your feet in the name of Jesus. This is the atmosphere to say whatever we want to be done. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you that as I sow tonight, in Jesus' name, that this seed is going on my behalf, in Jesus' name, and I thank you that I will be one of the ones, hallelujah, that student loan debt forgiveness will be granted to me and my family. I will owe no man nothing but to love him. It's already done, in Jesus' name, amen. I declare a decree, get ready for your letter in the mail. Get ready. Come on, I need you to release a praise like you know it's already done. Jesus hallelujah even though you may have messed up with your finances we serve a God of grace and mercy amen so if you made some mistake with your finances and you are in a lot of debt stand on your feet because I feel the, the anointing of debt free come on there's a debt free anointing in this church in the name of Jesus hallelujah come on this ain't no time for you to be shy amen you can sit there and miss your blessing praise God lift your hands come on now you got to sow a seed don't do don't lift your hands and you ain't putting nothing you got to make a deposit is that what the woman of God said tonight you got to make a deposit lift your hands father I thank you that your word declares we will owe no man nothing but to love them in Jesus name you said in Deuteronomy 15 all debts are canceled God says so so in the name of Jesus put a super on our natural and in the name of Jesus we declare a decree by the end of this year all debts canceled in Jesus name now lift up a praise like you know it's already done <laughs> hallelujah thank you Jesus one more one more P properties properties come on properties in Jesus name I hear the Lord saying you're not going to have property you're going to have properties if I'm talking to you, stand on your feet because that's you. That's you right there. Praise God. Come on. I said before the year is out, the woman of God already prophesied this. Come on. Let's stand in agreement in Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Not only do I see houses, but I see lots. I see lots. Thank you, Jesus. I, I also see a farm. Who is that? Ooh, ooh, ooh. A farm. Where's where's my oil? Come here, farm people. Because I, I heard the Lord say that God's going to give you a special anointing to grow to grow plants. I hear the Lord say, get ready for some new grocery stores that start coming out. In Jesus' name, I'm just going to say farm, receive it, okay? Farm, receive it. There it is. Farm, receive it. Farm, receive it. Come on. Farm, receive it. Hey, woo! Farm, receive it. Farm. Oh, glory to God. It's getting ready to happen for you. Farm. Hallelujah. Come on, farm. Ooh, plenty of land. Plenty of land. Farm, receive it. Plenty. Of, that's you. That's you. In Jesus' name. His family has farms, and I hear the Lord say, get ready, because it's about to be released to you. Woo! You shout out your Nabaha. Hey, in Jesus, woo! Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody that I just anointed, and as I keep praying, I hear the Lord saying that the food you grow will heal people's bodies. Farms. Farm. Come on. What the stores couldn't do, your farm is going to do it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see. I see. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Who else did I get? 
Amen. Get ready. Get ready, Reese, in Jesus' name. That's why y'all been under attack. Because what's on you is about to change the whole trajectory of the next three generations of your family. Farm. 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 Receive it? Farm. In Jesus' name. Farm. In this atmosphere, anything can happen. Hey, in this atmosphere, anything can happen. Anything can happen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Get ready, Velkey. Come on. Woo. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Wealth is just oozing out of you. Ideas, concepts, dreams, visions. It's all coming to pass. It's all coming to pass. Matter of fact, the more you talk, people think you're crazy. But I hear the Lord said it's because you got a vision of heaven. Hey, and it's about to be released. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Somebody give God praise. It's already done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's put our gifts on the altar. Those of y'all are giving in your gifts. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We receive it and we thank you for it tonight in Jesus' name. How many of y'all thank God for this awesome gift of Dr. Valerie Moore? Wasn't that powerful? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I think it's up here. It's my towel. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we clap our hands and thank God for the anointing in this place? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. How many of y'all believe this revival was called by God? This is what we needed. Amen. Praise God. Now, what does she say by July we're going to have? 25. 25 homeowners. Okay? If, if, if she was talking to you, jump up and say, that's me, and sit back down. All right. Praise God. Praise God. All right, we're going to let you go. Because I'm old school. I keep going and I'm just going, we're just going to have church. So listen, we're going to let you go tonight. Amen. Some of y'all, you're going to have a hard time in the morning, but that's all right. Holy Ghost is going to help you get up in the morning. Praise God. I, 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 want, I want you all to do me a favor, especially those of y'all that are active on social media. When you go home, share this service on your social media page. We got to get the word out when something is happening. Amen. And you share all this other crazy stuff. Share what God is saying. And then here's the second thing I want you to do. I want you to go to Dr. Valerie Moore's page and like it. And, and let's give a testimony of what God did because she blessed us tonight. I said she blessed us tonight. Okay. Follow her on Facebook. Follow her on Instagram. You best believe she's going to be back. Amen. Because that's an anointing that we want to keep in this house. Amen. Father, we give you praise. Let's all stand. We're going to let you go. Come on, honey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all thank God for Pastor Shanae. Go over to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all heard the woman of God. She said, as she expands, God is expanding his house. So every day, some people, a lot of times, we really, really cater a lot to the pastor and myself, but we forget the anointing that's on her life. I want you, when you lift us up, pray for both of us. Let, let the anointing rest on her in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for tonight. This was a supernatural night. This was a powerful night because the oil of the Lord is resting on this house. 
Thank you for Dr. Valerie Moore and the anointing that's resting on her. I pray, Lord God, that you re replenish her and restore her. I thank you, Lord God, for her and her team being with us tonight. Now we ask that your favor, your glory will rest upon us as we now travel home. Let your angels of protection be around us. And we'll come back ready to give you more glory, more honor, and more praise. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hug somebody around you. Tell them I love you. And God bless you. <laughs>